In the year 415, the infamous philosopher and mathematician Hypatia of Alexandria, Egypt, was savagely murdered by church monks. This murder shocked the Roman community and its government leaders. Hypatia was known far and wide as a respected philosopher, mathematician, government advisor, and a professor. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, is a book that I wrote that looks not just at the circumstances surrounding her death, but also at the sum of her entire life. I weave in the details of her education, disciples, Neoplatonic philosophies, female contemporaries, and the many mathematics that she wrote and taught about. There is truly more to Hypatia's life than her death. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, written by me, Gabrielle Burchak, is now on sale on Amazon. Buy your copy today. I have exciting news. My book, called Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, is now on sale on Amazon. And if you go to Amazon and type in Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, you will be able to find it. It is on sale in paperback and in hardcover. And today's episode will be a reading of the first chapter. I have good hope that there is something after death. This is a quote by Plato that I chose to use for the first chapter, which to me was very profound because after her death, her legacy continued to live on. Some of it was negative, some of it was propaganda, and some of it was a perfect and true reflection of this astounding woman who was a prominent and respected mathematician, philosopher, professor, and government advisor. Chapter 1 Hypatia stood at the precipice of change. As her father's legacy, she watched the academic institute that her father wholeheartedly worked for crumbling and decaying at the hands of change. Like her father, Hypatia immersed herself in academics during an era that was perishing. Regardless, she persisted in encouraging self-development and intellectual aptitude. At the pinnacle of her career, in her late 40s or early 50s, Hypatia was a revered and treasured Roman citizen of Alexandria. One spring evening during Lent in March 415, Hypatia stepped outside to the refreshing Alexandrian spring air. Dressed in her philosopher's white cloak, she left her lecture hall, ascended into her chariot, and began her ride home. That evening, as the indulgent blankets of sunset softened the colors of the buildings and veiled the mood and tone of Alexandria, the scents of the indigenous lotus bloom perhaps tempted many to come outside to relish in the springtime evening. However, behind the shadows cast by the twilight, the monks, also known as the Parabolani from the Nitrian Hills, began to rise as they prepared to do the bidding of a forceful church leader. At this point in her career, Hypatia was dedicated to enlightening her students with philosophy, science, astronomy, and mathematics. The city was socially evolving. Her steadfast disciples and students existed with their hearts in the new Christian movement and their minds in Alexandria's old, trusted academics. Far past the borders of Alexandria and throughout Rome, many knew Hypatia as an exceptionally accomplished professor, revered scholar, philosopher, and respected political advisor. Her students and disciples reflected this as they became cultivated leaders, intelligent rhetoricians, and insightful educators. Even so, the profoundness of her competence also seeded jealousy in others. Cyril, the new Pope of Alexandria, was keenly aware of who she was and what kind of pragmatic influence she wielded. Cyril had motives some considered authoritarian. His ulterior intentions were no secret to his peers and his enemies. He felt threatened by Hypatia, and the city knew it. He watched her closely with a piercing eye, while his malevolence and venom followed her wherever she wandered. Cyril was angry, and so were his congregants. Accordingly, different factions of this once tolerant city festered with resentment and divisions. Hypatia had a legendary standing in the community, in Alexandria and surrounding cities. Many knew her, many knew of her, and many celebrated her. Given the platform from which ancient historians and a former disciple wrote about her, it is evident she altruistically shared the depths of her knowledge with her eager learners. She had self-respect that was infectious, an intelligence that inspired. 
Hypatia's renowned prominence allowed her to advise and influence local and surrounding government officials, Alexandrian communities, and the city's academics. Hypatia was one of Alexandria's most valuable figures, and the town of Alexandria loved her. However, as she traveled through the city that evening, the vicious Parabolani approached her. Yanking her off her chariot, they dragged her to a nearby church called the Caesarium. There, at their religious sanctuary, they morbidly stripped Hypatia of her clothes and dignity in a moment of chaos. As she lay on the steps of their church, the monks swarmed over her body like a barbaric hurricane. The heartless mob stomped on her body, smashed her ribs, and shattered her limbs. Then, as their demonic act heightened to brutal inhumanity, the Alexandrian churchgoers gathered shards of ceramic tiles and flayed the skin off her body. Hypatia's body dripped with blood. Her eyes, which once looked upon her disciples with pride, her arms, which carried treasured books, and her legs, which walked through the city's respected university, were now mangled and unrecognizable. At the instigation of one man, the mob suffocated her mind, massacred her soul, and demolished the constructs of all that she gave to Alexandria. Cyril's pack of human monsters shattered Hypatia's personal temple and destroyed Alexandria's treasured incandescence. Even after Hypatia relinquished her life, the beasts continued. As the sun began its final daily descent, Hypatia exhaled her last breath. Her pain dissipated as she slipped away from the world. Possibly, to Hypatia, the screams of evil and wrath became muffled while she faded into a place of comfort as the vehement mob ripped off her limbs. All around, witnesses in Hypatia's beloved city watched as the throng proudly carried her appendages through the streets of Alexandria to the Cineron, where they burned her remains. The act was over. On that spring day, all that defined Hypatia had disintegrated during Alexandria's gruesome and violent commotion. Her extraordinary life, respectful love for her disciples, hard-earned accomplishments, academic passions, highly trained intellect, and sapient thoughts all burned to ashes and blew away with the Alexandrian spring breeze. This murder was the end of her life and the apex of time that signified the fast decline of Neoplatonic paganism. That breathtaking evening ushered in the birth of oppression, suppression, and government-ordered illiteracy. Her gruesome demise juxtaposed her abundant life that included a loving community of friends, disciples, students, peers, and political leaders. Hypatia had seized and achieved opportunities many would consider beyond reach for any academic, let alone for a woman. She was the heir of the great mathematician Theon and rightfully the head of her own university. She had established herself as a prominent scholar, government counsel, and asset to Alexandria's community and time-honored academia. The account of her death is brief. However, the story of her world and her life is not. Thus, through the gift of historians, scholastics, and academics, we find traces of Hypatia. And through these outlines, we can honor her and remember her, not for her death, but for all that she embraced. I'm Gabrielle Burchak. This podcast has been brought to you by Caffeine. Delicious, wonderful, nectar of the gods caffeine. Coffee, tea, coffee candy, you name it. I love it. Thank you for listening to Math Science History. If you like what you are listening to, please remember to subscribe and leave a review. I would really appreciate that. If you are interested in reading more about the history of math and science, please come visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. And while you are there, if you like what you're listening to, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Until next time, carpe diem!